Welcome back. Today we are going to be flying out the Focke-Wolf 90 F8. This thing gets an air spawn and so does the XP-50. The XP-50 is one of those vehicles that you don't really want to run into. Luckily, you have a pretty damn good roll rate and the turn with the flaps is quite okay. The issue is if people actually play their cards right, you're not going to get that far. And considering this XP-50 right here is kind of damaged... I wanted to finish him very quickly because there is another guy directly on our ass. It's the P38J that's diving on us right now. And there is an Yak tree right next to him. What are the advantages of the Focke Wolf? Well, you're going to see one of them right here. First of them is the air spawn, which instantly got cancelled out by a plane an entire BR lower than us. And another advantage is the rip speed as well as the roll rate at higher speed. The P38J is not very maneuverable at high speed and the rip speed is rather low so i'm trying to lure him in by not going too steep keep him kind of close make him think he's about to get the kill and then he takes his own wings off how terrific next up yak tree and the yak tree is kind of annoying to deal with mainly because well it's a yak tree on the deck he is a lot more maneuverable however because we are a little bit faster and the yak tree does compress a decent amount we are going to use the fact that he's going quite fast against him. Unfortunately for us, he actually does the right thing and he goes vertical. When he goes vertical like this, I can't really kill him. I'm going to get a one single shot right here, but I'm not able to get the shot in. I'm going to loop over, try to cut into his loop once more. And you can tell that this guy just has more energy. He turns much better and I'm just dead if I try to follow that. He also has a red wingtip, which instantly means he's of course extremely dangerous. Yes, that's sarcasm. Thank you for understanding. We are just going to run away. And we are going to try to get a little bit of speed back so that we can make him compress again. Now I do know that he doesn't want to take the fight, even though he has basically every advantage. So, what do we do? We are going to lure him into doing the exact same thing by doing the same thing as we just did. Except this time, we are going to be prepared. So I'm going to not try to turn horizontally. I'm just going to instantly send it after him. And this time, the shot is a lot easier to make. And we take his pilot out for dinner. That's the Act 3 done. XP-50 is crit. And the P-38 decided to dive to the Titanic and implode it in on itself. So what do we do now? The thing that the Focke Wolf is kind of decent at. And it's being above people that have engaged others throughout the entire match. Yeah, that's something this plane is good at. A thing that most props are pretty decent at. And something that with the 190 is basically a necessity. If you are not in a squad or if you don't have teammates that are actually somewhat competent around you. You are going to find yourself in a little bit of a tight spot very often. And you're just kind of forced to run away 90% of the time. Unless of course, which is not extremely uncommon. The enemy has absolutely no idea what they are doing. And they just end up flying in your guns. I'm trying to explain this. On the grounds that you fight someone that's actually pretty competent. And then your only real advantage is going to be your straight line speed. And your linear retention when it comes to very shallow climbs. And making sure you maintain your speed. It doesn't turn very well but it does keep its speed quite well. And even in the dogfight for something like a P-51D. Which does out turn you. Your power generation at low speed is actually pretty damn good. Which makes it so that you will win versus planes in the dogfight. Even though they might out turn you. This isn't of course a very foolproof method because very often they will have more speed coming into the fight and then the power generation is kind of offset by the fact that they just instantly outturn you. Yak-90 thinks it's a good idea to go vertical for me with a Spitfire and a 109 next to him. He ends up eating shit just the same way. Here we are in the next match and we got the air spawn and this time they don't have many air spawn planes so we actually have a little bit of rain here. And I want to make sure that I have a little bit of speed to either dodge the head-on, recommit to it and just react to what the enemy does. The Spitfire dodges way too soon and he's going to end up giving us a pretty easy shot. I was about to break off there because it's not worth the chase of Spitfire. However, he turns back into my guns and he becomes a very easy kill. The Zero here is not really paying attention so we go for him first, we switch targets. Zero is now crit, the Spitfire is also back to the hangar. We will now just continue on, on our straight line journey. And kind of just fly offset to the enemy team. If one or two of them follow me in now. Or follow me out I should say. It's going to alleviate the pressure of my team. Substantially in the middle of the map. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. I don't really have to worry about killing all of them. If I split up the enemy team. Kill one or two. And then bring two or three with me. Into my own little journey. But what ends up happening is. That it essentially turns into a, 
11 v 16 in the middle of the map because my team is actually somewhat concentrated the team fights will win you most games and then that right here is one of those game winning things that 264 is not actively killing anyone but by flying straight through the two guys that are directly on my six the a6m5 and the g55 wasted a lot of position and a lot of energy trying to get a free kill in and because of that i'm able to just turn back in and clean both of them up i'm gonna go for g55 first he actually gets killed by the other guy as i'm trying to shoot him down and now the zero is just kind of directly above me i'm not gonna contest that i'm simply going to fly away the yak tree is gonna have fun with that there we go he actually goes down and i will just decide to fly somewhere else on the map a7m kind of dangerous don't really want to deal with it especially when it's above me the one that's below me i'm not that afraid of but i do want to be somewhat wary of them and i want to invite him into coming towards me so that it again takes off the pressure of t190 and the yak tree that are both 1v2ing the p47 a7m comes in but he's going pretty quick and we're actually going to invite him into a dogfight there we go he misses a shot we make him turn a full 180 once more and then we do a little bit of a flat turn and we are going to maintain a lot more energy throughout this maneuver and because of that we are just going to break off run away and the a7m now wasted absolute metric ton of energy and he is going to contest absolutely no one again so we are going to fly towards the tempest but then i see two of them on the left there and the a7m is somewhat turning so i want to make sure that he doesn't climb whatsoever and because we are still going about 500 i'm just going to spray my mgs in the head on and he hope that he dodges it and if he does dodge it i'm just going to recommit there we go he actually does do that he gets taken down and we are going to fly towards the other side of the map with the a7m and the other spitfire why the tempest is ground pounding he's not really gonna accomplish much he's really doing absolutely nothing and these two guys are kind of below me not a massive disadvantage but enough for me to actually deal with them so i'm just gonna climb up over them i don't want to stall myself out i'm just waiting for the spitfire to get close enough and then i'm just going to bank off a little bit and bait him into the vertical if he doesn't take it we have enough position here and we have enough team teammates around to simply seal his fate regardless and that's the strength of this vehicle early game presence that's the only real presence that you are going to get if you are going to be playing this thing solo and it makes such a massive impact that it really doesn't matter what the team does if you kill two or three at the start and then distract another one or two maybe even three you take out so many people out of the effective fight that your team will just absolutely steamroll them and that's the main strength of air spawn planes the issue is that you will run into xp 50s very often you will run into p38 l's very often and most of the air spawn planes will absolutely counter you something like a spitfire lf mark 9 will absolutely counter you if he actually plays his cards right and the issue with a plane like this is it's just not very meta it's in the same boat as something like an f104 sure you might have some battle presence and you might actually get some stuff done but if the enemy actually plays it right, you're not going to accomplish all that much. Luckily for us, the average ROB pilot is very inexperienced and they often will just send it for the first red dot that they see. And that makes a plane like this actually somewhat viable. Your early game presence will net you a lot of kills, but it will also net you a lot of deaths and very often losses because your team is just not going to be that good. And this right here is a terrific example of why you don't want to merge with people at 300 kilometers an hour. When that happens you are essentially forced to just send it into the head-on but you don't really want to do that in something like the a6m5 why is this a problem because you don't have the speed to dodge you're basically turning in place and it makes it very easy for your opposing player to shoot you down and if he does have a decent amount of guns just like two mg 151s together with the two mg i don't know the 13 millimeters you're not going to be able to dodge him even though your maneuverability completely trumps mine you need to make sure that you have a little bit of speed into the merge so you can actually roll around my guns make sure you don't get shot and then you can turn after me that's going to net you a lot more points and a lot more consistent results here comes the c205 and the c205 is kind of like the focke wolf 90 it doesn't turn particularly well and it also doesn't compress that much but the c205 is a plane that i'm pretty confident dogfighting especially when he just dives out in the middle of the merge and instantly gives me his six I am in the advantage here. I compress basically as much as he does, if not even less. I roll a lot better and I will just catch him. This is a big mistake. He needed to send it 
Because the second I get on the six like this, he is not going to have a very easy time actually getting rid of me. He flies perfectly straight, we lead up the guns, and we take him out for dinner as well. We are now pretty low, but we did take down three guys, and our team is winning basically in the background. And then I notice a VB-10, as well as a F4U on the horizon. There's two guys directly above me, teammates, and they are dealing with only one guy, so I'm gonna pretend that they are not there and I'm going to assume that they are going to be winning the fight and I'm just going to focus my time and my energy on the guys that are actually relatively low. Sometimes you just need to rely on your teammates. Very often you cannot do this but hey we are just going to try to get as much done as quickly as possible. That's the way I fly this thing and that's how I got the most amount of results. You saw that I wasn't trying to climb up over him. I'm trying to use speed for the most to dodge the head on and then after he tries to send it after us the VB-10 just doesn't have the engine power or the weight to really contest with this kind of maneuver. We go into a little bit of a corkscrew. We just kind of turn it into a flat turn. And after that, this guy's completely out of energy. And it doesn't really matter what he does. He's just going to end up directly in my gun. So when people say it's not the plane, it's the pilot. It doesn't matter what pilot you put in that VB-10. If I put him into that position, he is not going to be winning. And that's not because I'm arrogant. That's not because I think I would beat everyone. That's because the VB-10 simply does not have the performance to keep up with what I'm doing. F4U, kind of in the same boat right here. In this current matchmaker, it has to be an F4U 1. And it doesn't matter if it's the 1C, the 1D, the 1A. At the end of the day, it's basically a 3.3 plane. And it does not have the performance to really keep up with this thing in any kind of vertical maneuver. There we go. He is basically flying straight. He doesn't have the ability to put pitch up after us. If he did try that, he would stall out in my guns. So, at the end of the day, can he really do anything? No. For the F4U1 to be competitive in such a scenario, it basically needs to go about his top speed. And it needs to make sure that... I can dive on him like that. The issue is that the FOU ones just don't climb particularly well. And it's very hard for them to actually keep themselves out of such a position without playing like the absolute most passive person you have ever seen. They can go quite quick and you can keep them fast, at least fast enough. This thing is basically the same speed. But the 190 has better acceleration, it has a better sustained climb rate, it has a better sustained turn rate. It doesn't really have any real advantages other than the maneuverability once it does have speed. The F4U1 is actually more maneuverable at basically every given speed that you will find it at. If both are going 300, if both are going 400, if both are going 500, the F4U will have the edge in maneuverability. The issue is that the F4U is not able to maintain those speeds and it will fall out of the air before it will actually get a shot on us so all we need to do is make sure that we just don't get hit if he dodges first maybe second angle we will simply win the fight and here is the mg 151s in action we now have critted three people this match and we have nothing to show for it the 151s might not have been hit by real shadow but they were also the worst 20 mils before Real Shadow came around. So is it really that much better than something like the AM3 and something like the Shavak? Yeah, it is a little bit better, but at the end of the day, you're still not going to get very far. We try to crit one, switch targets, go for the other one to help out our teammate, but again, a bunch of hits, and we did manage to kill the other one. I'm now just going to exit the area. I'm going to be looping over, and I am going to contest the Typhoon again. Or not again, I'm going to be contesting the Typhoon because he has the most energy. And I can actually somewhat dodge that head on because he doesn't roll particularly well. And this right here is exactly what I mean. The Typhoon decides to go for the guy on the deck that already has four of his teammates on him. Instead of going for me. So now I have free reign to come into the furball, kill one of them and just exit again. The Typhoon should have contested me or at least have done something to conserve his energy. He dove on a guy that was already dead just to get absolutely nothing. At the same time, this game has already been lost basically, so maybe just try to dive in to get something out of it. But yeah, this is uh, your average experience in the Focke Wolf. You'll get a lot of crits, you get a lot of hits, and at the end of the day, I'm just trying to get another kill in. Because I'm kind of upset that I managed to get three assists already. There goes the Typhoon, there goes the game, and there goes my sanity. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.